Dear students, this lecture is about the domain and the range of a function. So let's get started. Now, uh, the domain of a function is basically the set of all possible values of x. And uh, if we jot them down in a certain way, we can say that we have written the domain of a function. As you can see, the all permissible values of x which is the independent variable. Now, uh, if all the permissible values of y, that is the dependent variable, if they are listed, then we shall be getting the range of a function. So it is very easy to understand the domain is the set of the all possible values of the independent variable, whereas the range shows the all the possible values of the dependent variable. Now we can do the mapping of this uh, concept. This uh, diagram actually is known as the mapping of a function. On the left hand side, as you can see, the domain is written in, in a circle, which is, a like, which is like an oval actually. And on the right hand side, there is a range, which is written in, in a similar sort of oval. Now, these a, b, c, d, these are all the values that x can adopt. Now, this is the domain. Once we put a into the function, it will become fa. Once we put b, it will become fb. So, putting the values of c and d, we'll be getting fc and fd. So, this is how the domain and the range of a function, they are connected. And this is how we map them. Now coming to a numerical example. As you can see, the domain is having some numbers, which actually are the odd numbers. They are starting from 1 and ending on 11. And on the right-hand side, the range is starting from 2 and ending, to, ending at 12. So for each value of x, there is one value of y. So domain and range, they are equally balanced. Now I can write uh, these uh, values as, as ordered pairs and make a set of it. For example, 1 and 2, here it is. And the final one would be 11 and 12, and here it is. And the remaining, they are written here. So we can write them in the form of ordered pairs and you must remember that x comes first before y. Now these ordered pairs show the mapping of the function in, in, a dis, uh, in an enumeration sort of way. If I try to separate the domain from the range, it can be done simply by extracting the values of the domain and writing them in curly brackets, separated with commas, and range can also be extracted, and it can be written in a similar way. And we can hence explain that how range and domain are written. Let's come to some economic example. This is basically a case where cost per day is calculated, and it is basically dependent upon the daily output of the firm. So you can see dependent and independent variables, they are coming into play. And in functional form, by explaining the function that would be this, that is cost is a function of output. In a more clear and explicit way, this equation shows that cost is equal to the sum of 150 and the product of 7 or with Q or 7 times of output. A caveat, a piece of information which is given is capacity limit. So that firm can only produce 100 units on daily basis, not more than that. Now, this is an input that I can express in the form of domain. The domain, as you remember, is the set of all permissible values of independent variable, which in this case is Q. So the domain in the description form is written as Q, where Q is from 0 to 100. Now using this information, I can come up with the possible values of the dependent variable that is cost. And that is by putting these values into this function that I am given. It is done here. As you can see, 
in the table, the daily output is the independent variable and cost per day is the dependent variable. By putting the value that is zero, the first value was zero and it is put here. In this equation, 150 plus seven into zero would be 150. So 150 is, is the answer. And uh, I can check that for all these values. I can put the value of Q firstly zero and then 10 and then 20. And I can do this process till the extreme value of the domain of daily output which is 100 and I will get the extreme value or the final value of the range of the function which is the cost per day and it is mentioned here. After making this table which I leave on you to do the calculations which are very easy, you can make the diagram where the dependent variable is plotted on y-axis which is a convention and we make the independent variable on x-axis. There is a straight line as we can expect, there is a certain pattern with which the graph is made. There's 150 which is hidden somewhere and this is the 7Q which is showing the slope of the cost curve. In this way, we can use the domain and range in order to make a certain graph and understand the relationship between economic variables.